because you don't want any filtering in it because GMSK goes clear down to zero and up to about 3,800 kilohertz or 3,800 hertz, and you can't have it <coughs> try to filter that. So these little three-dollar fob USB cards that you can get to plug into a USB port on your computer are what you want. Okay. Don't try to use your signal link. It has a transformer in it that modifies the signal. Um, it also has a dummy repeater so that you can uh, uh, run tests without actually having to go on the air. <laughs> and you use your DV dongle if you have one to create audio in that. Um, and unfortunately, it comes as a Windows binary. But you can also get the source and compile it either for Windows or Linux. Uh, I run it on Linux. It has a GUI for setting it up, so it's real easy to set up. Uh, documentation's in the weak there. Uh, doesn't interact with the trust server, as I said. Uh, gets all the information from the IRC DVD. There's no registration. It does have a filter to try and make sure that people are using real call signs. Uh, some people think it's cute to put coax as the my call sign, or pizza, or... Uh, my favorite beagle or whatever. Um, so it does look for those and filter those out. This gateway has a lot of features built into it. It, it does have the linking features. It'll do D+. Plus. It does D extra, which is an alternative to D+. Plus. Um, uh, it does have code to avoid cross-linking because there are people in each camp that don't want you talking to the other camp. So it takes care of that. It has an interesting DRATS feature. Any of you in here in emergency communications belong to an Aries group or your town's group or something like that? One of the um, issues people have had was Sometimes it's not convenient to put a bunch of DRAT stations in the field and then not be able to talk to the EOC or something like that. Well, with this gateway software, you can actually use the DRAT software to come into it and come out the repeater directly over the internet. So it, it's an enhancement that's not in the other gateways yet. It does uh, do the DPRS thing to get position reports. Um, it has multi-repeater support. Uh, at least four, it could do more if we needed. It, uh, it's fairly recent, but it also does DD mode, so we can send uh, the higher speed data through it. Uh, the other thing that's cool about it, and this is true of the G4 ULF system, is it operates either with a full repeater or a simplex node. So if you've heard of hotspots, you can replace that software with this software and have full functionality. The hotspot only talks to D plus linking. This, you could do call sign routing, you could do all the features of D star with a simplex radio. So, you know, if you're in a location where there's not a lot of other folks that need access to the network, you take an inexpensive radio, you take one of these uh, methods, either a GMSK modem or a sound card, you hook it up to a computer, and you have full access to the D-Star network. Uh, it is the platform for StarNet Digital, which was the title of this talk, including a bridge, because you've got some people that don't have radios, but they can get into one of these linking systems, so we can tie a particular linking reflector into a group and have traffic go back and forth, so the uh, Non-IRF users can connect to that and talk into the group, and the group can talk back to them. Because they don't do call sign routing. Okay, so, StarNet Digital, what we advertise. It's a new application. Uh, it was announced on April 3rd. It was ready on the 1st, but I didn't think it was a good idea to put the announce out and out on <laughs> April 1st. Um, it actually was ready a couple days before that, but I wanted to do a little bit of documentation. Uh, it was designed by me, uh, implemented by G4KLX. Um, I'll just make a sidebar here. Uh, there is another developer out there that is distributing something called DStarNet. It pretends to be this, but it's not 
implemented to the spec. So if you want to operate in the spec, use uh, Jonathan's stuff until we get some developers that want to operate in the spec. It is not linking. There are no full up links. If you go on a repeater and you hear someone talking on a Starnet group and you just key the mic, nobody in the Starnet group is going to hear you unless they're on the local repeater. You actually have to address the group and talk to it. Um, it uses call sign routing. Uh, it's really simple how you join a group if you see one on the air. Two primary ways you do it. You either put it in the your call sign, or you wait till the last transmission and you'll see that the source address or the my address is sent to the group's call sign, and you press the call sign capture button on your radio, and it puts it in the your, and then you key up. As soon as you key up, it records you and makes you a member of the group. Uh, you don't need to switch to CQ, CQ, CQ. Even if you, if you do, you'll quit talking to the group because the group only takes people that are talking to it. Um, there's no unlinking. Uh, you can leave the group, but you don't unlink. So whenever you want to talk to the group, you stay subscribed until you unsubscribe, basically forever unless the server resets or something like that. You're a member of that group. You can go off and do whatever other radio activities you want, but it remembers who you are. Okay. So when you want to actually talk to the group, you put that group's call sign back in the your field, and wherever you, whenever you key up, your signal will go to everyone else that's subscribed to the group, whatever repeater they're on in the network. Who or what assigns the group call sign? The group call sign can be one of two things. And I got to slide on that a little bit later. But it can either be an ITU call sign, or we have worked with the trust server team and with the IRCDDD team. And it can be a self-assigned call sign starting with STN. STN000 is one that I have. Um, the group will follow you from repeater to repeater. So if, if you log in on, say, the Portland repeater, and you drive up to Federal Way, and you just key your mic. You don't have to resubscribe. You just key your mic. The network now knows you're in federal way. And if somebody sends something to that group, it'll come out the federal way repeater as well as the Portland repeater. Unless no one else is on in Portland, and then it'll forget that anybody was on the group in Portland. So it really keeps track of where everybody is. Um, and whenever you want to talk to the people, you put that, that destination call sign in again, and away you go. Is there some kind of ID that the PC <coughs> sends out? Is that how it knows where you go? Where you go? It's actually the reverse. It's every time you key, your call sign gets sent with your radio signal. Okay, so that's the ID. That's the ID. The repeater picks that up. Sends it to IRCDDB, it sends it out to all the other repeaters, as well as the group server, and the group server notes, oh, W7LDC is now on such and such a repeater, and he's a member of my group. Okay? So your group, when you're ready to leave it, you have to make sure that the your call sign is set to the group call sign, and in the text message, which is 20 characters that you can send along with, with your signal, you just put the word log off in it, and it'll log you off the group. And it'll actually send you an acknowledgement of that, that you've logged off. Okay? Uh, so, let's, let's see this in practice. We've got a Starnet server sitting over here, and right now we have six stations that have joined that group. Let's say that it's Oregon Aries group. Okay? And the six of them are happily keying their mics and talking to each other. Everything's coming out. Nothing's coming out of repeater four and five because no one's subscribed to the group. So um, 
the little white guy there uh, decides to drive down the road a little bit, and he's now moved from repeater two to repeater three. He's still in the group, so he's part of the communication. But we see that the little whatever color the guy below <coughs> him is came into repeater four, um, and so repeater four is now carrying all the transmissions to the group. So we now have four repeaters involved in the conversation. Our little white smiley face moves down to repeater four. He's still in the group. The guy that was there is still there. Now someone came on on, on repeater five and keyed into the group. Now we've got five repeaters involved in the communication. So let's say you're in an emergency exercise and your team is moving through the field and they lose, uh, you know, uh, four and five may be a UHF and a VHF repeater, and in some places they have better coverage on UHF than on VHF, and they can move between those two repeaters and stay in the group. Okay. So, uh, the next step, this guy's still moving over to another frequency, and now a bunch of them move up to three, four and five are no longer in the group, and we've, we're back to three repeaters in the group. And it does this all dynamically. There's no linking, there's no unlinking, it's just the fact that those stations have moved between those repeaters. 